Hi, this is Bill Guesswitch. Today I want to talk to you about Blazor Forms with Validation. I'll be publishing a couple of videos on this subject, so this is part one. The agenda for today will be, we're going to create a person DTO model. DTO stands for Data Transformation Object. And I'm going to use a person just as an analogy for today's exercise. We'll create a person component. And then we'll add the validation to it. Now, one document that I find very helpful is Microsoft's document on the edit form and that process. So we will, let's take a look at it. Here is their documentation. We'll talk about edit form. We'll talk about these input texts and input number, input components. And I always like to look at the other documentation that's around it. Certainly Microsoft has a Blazor section and the associated sections below it. If you get a chance, check out this documentation. It's very helpful. I'll leave a reference to it in the description. For the code today, we'll use the Blazor app from Scratch app that we've been working with. So you either can use the project that you completed at the end of the integrate bootstrap and navigation video that I put together, or you can go to my GitHub repository and there is the repository and we will start with the integrate bootstrap branch. Back in Visual Studio, we're in the Blazor app from Scratch solution and the integrate bootstrap branch so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is add a DTO, data transformation object, for the person. So let's go ahead and let's add a DTO folder to the solution. Now this isn't where I would normally put it, but we'll talk about architecture in a future video. For now, let's put it here. And then we're going to add a new class to this and we will call this person DTO. All right. In the person DTO, we'll have three properties. Public string first name. Let me just get that out of the way. Get set public string last name get set and public int age. So we will create a form that collects these three pieces of information. So now let's go over to create our pages or our person component. And we'll do that within the pages folder. We'll right click, add, and as we've done before, we want to make sure that we choose Razor Component and we will choose Person. First thing I always like to do is to make sure that I've got my routing correct. So let's do at page directive slash person. We'll call this. All right, and before we forget, let's go over to the share the nav menu. We will copy down the last menu item and actually we will put it here in the middle. We will make the href person and we will make the name person. All right. So with that done, we'll go back to the person razor file and as we mentioned previously in the Microsoft documentation they have a component called edit form and what we're going to do initially is we will define there's a attribute called model and that attribute will be at my person we'll close that up and obviously my person is not defined so we will go over here and we will say public uh, private person DTO my person we'll get a red squiggly there and that's because we need the using at using blazer app from scratch dot DTO that'll take care of that that'll take care of that there we go next thing we want to do is we want to add an input for the first name. 
So we will put input. And in that documentation you'll see from Microsoft, you'll see that they've defined an input text component that takes at bind dash value. And we will make that equal to my person dot first name. All right, and I'll give it an ID of my first name. And let's end it. So it's an input text because it's a text field. There's the field name, my person dot first name, and we'll give it an ID of first name. We'll do that because we want to give this a label. We'll say for equals my first name. And we will say first name colon. And we will wrap that in a paragraph. All right. So there's the first name field. Next thing we'll do is we'll copy that down twice. So what do we do? We added in a last name field and we added in a age field. If you notice there was a red squiggly under the my person dot age because we had input text and since that's an int it was telling us oh well you need to either make it make this a text or make that a number. So I put input number. That's another component type. Let's add a label that we can use that will output information to. Label and we'll just say uh, result and we will say at final result. And we're just going to use this to make sure that the data that we're putting in is being received appropriately by the my person class. Let me just wrap that in a B as well. There we go. So we'll go define final result. First we'll make equals new person DTO. <clears throat> just give it a value to start off with. And then we will define private string final result. And we'll make that equal to. And what we will do is we will put a void submit button pressed. And we will set that equal to. We will say final result equals here we go so we will enter in data and then we're going to add a button in a second and then when we click the button final result will get updated with whatever we've typed in and we'll just verify that all the information works so let's add a button here. Let's put that in a paragraph as well. We'll add a button. I will call this at on click equals submit button pressed. And we will say submit. All right. So when we click the button, We'll call this, we'll update it, that once we update it in the code, the DOM recognizes a change and it'll update this. So it will get updated only when we submit. All right, let's run it. We have our person object. Let's put Fred. Let's put Flintstone. And we'll make them um, 25 and we'll submit. And we get Fred Flintstone is 25 years old. If we change the first name to Barney, and we click Submit, see that changes. And if we make it empty, we submit, we get that. So it looks like it's working. 
The only challenge is we don't have any validation in there. So let's add the validation. The edit form actually makes it very easy to do validation based on data annotations within whatever model is being used. So what we will do is let's go back to the person DTO. Let's do a couple of things here. Let's make the first name required. And when we do that, we'll get a red squiggly, our favorite friend, control period. Tells us we need the annotation, data annotations reference. We will then say we want this to be a min length of two comma, and then we want the error message to say, please enter at least two characters, okay? And the next thing we'll do is down here, we will make the age a range. We'll say it can be from 21 to, let's say, 2000. So we've got the two, we've got two validation criteria up here for this first name, required and min length. And then we have one down here for age, which is, uh, needs to be between 21 and 2000. All right, so with that in place, we'll go back to the person. And there's only a couple of things we have to add here. First is to add the ability to check the data annotations. And there's a data annotations validator tag that we need to add. And then we want to see the error messages. So we will see the error messages here validation summary. And then there's one other thing. So that'll actually do the validation. And then when there is a on valid submit, so we'll choose the on valid submit. So when it we at valid submit it, we're going to say submit button pressed. So only once it's valid will that get called, and we will get rid of the on click here. We don't need this anymore. So let's see what happens. Theoretically, what should happen is when we submit, as long as everything's valid, the label will be updated. If it's not, we should get some error messages. So let's see what happens. Go to the person, we'll type in Fred Flintstone age of 25, submit, everything works. Let's get rid of the first name, tab out of it. Oh, first name is required. So we'll put in F. Oh, please enter at least two characters. So we'll put in Fred E, Fred E, to show that it updates. Get rid of that. And we'll go in here and first we'll do 15, tab out. Oh, we've got must be 21 years old. So we'll say 25, tab out, good. And it will say Freddie Flintstone, 25. Let's make this 35 just to see that that works. And submit, and there we go. Freddie Flintstone is 35 years old. So we've got validation working. And there you have the initial video on Blazor Forms validation. So here's my contact information. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or would you like to discuss any topics further. Thank you for watching.